Today we're taking a look at the relics in Smite Season 4. We're just gonna go through all of them one by one and talk about them and see which ones are good, which uses they have and which one are more niche oriented. The first one we're starting with is Aegis Amulet. Not all too much has changed here, this item gives you 2 seconds of damage and healing immunity, so you basically, out of the fight as a whole, uh, you can still walk but you can't use abilities, and the whole thing has a cooldown of 160 seconds. The upgrade version reduces the cooldown to 130 seconds. I do think that usually this is something that you should consider investing in a late game. I generally believe that most upgrades are not worth it too early in the build, because 500 gold will delay your build by quite a lot. And from what we've seen in the relegations, what we've seen from higher level players, most of them hold on to the upgrades for their relics until very last, unless they're looking for a very specific upgrade. And 30 seconds difference will rarely actually change something, unless you're maybe against a Poseidon or something where you really think you need that extra extra 30 seconds colon reduction in order to counter every single ult. Due to its effect not changing much, Aegis still remains a core item for many squishier characters, simply allowing them to soak up an instance of burst and avoid it completely, which is always going to be good and I don't think there's too much that's going to change about the relevance of this item. We'll still see it picked up by pretty much any squishy, any mage, any hunter, any assassin, simply because of the strength this item has. The next item on the list is Blink Rune. Here, not too much has changed either. It's still a short range blink, 55 units away, uh, which allows you to get closer to the enemies. Currently, you have to be out of combat for 3 seconds to use it, so it's a decent time frame, which will sometimes allow you to use it as an escape after using your own escape as well, to get out of problematic situations that way. So, good engage tool, solid escape, 120 seconds cooldown, the upgraded version brings that down to 90 seconds. Again, still a very potent relic, even stronger than before now because you can reduce the cooldown further. This is one of the relics where I think on certain guards is worth upgrading earlier, especially if you think uh, along the lines of Sylvanas or Gap, who will often need blink relatively early and relatively often in combination with their ultimates. So there is the option to upgrade that earlier, but I wouldn't always recommend that, just if you really think you need to engage more or more often with the relic. Overall, this item has become even stronger with a chance to reduce the cooldown and will be picked up quite frequently, especially as a more aggressive relic choice. The next one is Bracer of Undoing. This is one of the relics which I would say is generally on the weaker side. The effects sound really nice, but you have to put them into perspective. In its non-upgraded state, you get 50% of the health and mana back that you lost in the last 3 seconds. Most people would not really care too much of the mana here, that's gonna be a niche use, so the main use here is the health. But if you were to get Aegis instead, you would completely negate any damage for 2 seconds instead of just getting 50% of the last 3 seconds back. And for most characters, in most situations, Aegis is simply the better choice because of that. Because you can't die in the first place, whereas with Bracer you can still die before and if you don't time it right. Also, Bracer is affected by anti-heal, which is built quite often or fairly often at the moment, and it just doesn't offer much more beyond that. The 3 seconds cooldown reduction on all the abilities is what makes this item really interesting and makes for some really good niche plays. If you are really far ahead and you want to play really aggressive, for example, then you can make use of this. Or if you have a specific character where you think that with this cooldown reduction you can combo twice, for example, a willish double feather step or something like that, then you can maybe make use of this better. Overall, it's more of a niche case and will always be uh, considered somewhat inferior to Aegis on many guards. The upgrade version doesn't do much for that either. The cooldown remains 120 seconds. The only difference here is that it is now the restoration for the last 5 seconds instead of 3. Makes the item a little better, but an upgrade that I would rarely consider worth it, especially because the cooldown reduction doesn't get increased. Cursed Ankh is a little uh, different, a little uh, new somewhat, but an, a known effect, but in a new item. It is now a pure anti-heal item, not even a slow on there. 50% healing reaction for 10 seconds, which is quite long, with 150 second cooldown. That means that you only really want to pick it up if you have to counter a heavily healing comp, because it's a long cooldown, it doesn't do anything outside of the anti-heal, and it is, well, just 50%. Here, the upgraded version makes a fair bit of a difference, in my opinion. While the cooldown remains 150 seconds, you now have 65% anti-heal, which is really the majority of a heal, for 15 seconds. 
This means that in an extended engage, this anti heal will just last all the way through. And that, I believe, is very, very strong and can be very, very potent. You have to get to the point to upgrade this first, though. And once again, it really only really makes sense to be built against a very heavy healing focus comp. If you have an enemy Sylvanus, for example, then I would say go for it. But if there's only a self healer, for example, then I don't think it's worth it most of the time. So again, more of a niche case, a specific counter case. But for that, it has it fulfills its purpose very, very well. And many people will underestimate the 15 second duration. The next one is Hand of the Gods. I gotta be honest, I do think this is one of the weakest relics we have at the moment. It does hit jungle bosses again, but in its essence is really mostly for jungle creeps. Does 300 damage plus 10 per level, so up to 500 true damage. But it, first of all, it's kind of hard to tell how much health the camp exactly has, and if you use it a little too early, then it'll mean you will not get the cooldown reduction on it. And if you use it a little too late, then you basically lose efficiency of this item already. So that's already annoying in terms of timing. The secure for big objectives is just not that much anymore with the value being lowered significantly. If you're looking for invades, it has potential there, but it's nothing crazy. And the only real reason that you might consider getting is, is the stun. If you get the upgrade version, the one second stun on 120 seconds cooldown. But even that I found to be somewhat lackluster so far. For example, I built this against Nemesis, where it is one of the best counters because it counters her shield entirely. But even against her, it didn't really do all too much. So really, I don't see this being picked up very often. Mostly a niche case for very invade-heavy playstyles, and that's pretty much about it. Heavenly Wings is off a little better than that. It has 40% movement speed for all of your allies in a 55 unit range, and it also cleanses them of slows once. It only cleanses, doesn't keep them immune from slows, but it cleanses. 150 seconds cooldown, which is quite long. So really, you only want to pick this up if the enemy team is heavily slow focused, if they have something like a nemesis, for example, where you really think you will need that anti-slow. Because overall, there are better relic choices in terms of pure teamfight potential, but this is a very specific counter. The upgrade reduces the movement uh, penalty or move the base attack movement penalty. This is somewhat nice, but then again, we see quite a few Hunter's builds with Haste and Vitalis at the moment anyways, and those are the ones who make most use of it, so really, I don't know which gods would benefit from that all that much. There are some cases which could benefit from it, but many of the gods that really need the Haste and Effect already have it, and uh, you're not really gonna invest into that unless you feel like you're really gonna be in a lead where you can afford those 500 extra gold for the effect. There was the thought that it might be built on Hunters, we haven't really seen that so far. If we see it, then it might, you know, be a different story, but with the 150 second cooldown, we'll see about that. Horrific Emblem is uh, pretty straightforward, 40% slow for 5 seconds, also 25% attack speed reduction, cooldown 150 seconds. You're getting this against heavy AA focused team comms, for example with a Hunter and a Kali, something like that. Works out really well in that regard, and the slow is quite significant, both the slows are. So, decent pickup, uh, more of a situation like counter once again. You won't get this against a single hunter, for example, most of the time. The upgrade here doesn't do all too much, it simply reduces the cooldown down to 120 seconds. So, something you would only pick up very, very late, but the essential core main item is very strong as a counter. Magic Shell is somewhat weaker than last season, it's got quite a few nerfs. It still gives 30 protections each for 5 seconds and 5% damage reduction on a 140 seconds cooldown. If you're against a very damage heavy comp, then this is still a nice secondary support relic, but you wouldn't pick it up early in most scenarios anymore simply because there are other options, especially meditation, that just work better in that regard. The upgrade makes it a little bit better, it gives you 45 protections each and 10% damage reduction, so it's still worthy as a pickup, just not as good as before anymore. And that brings us directly to the item that replaces it, Meditation Cloak. With that 15% health, healing and 35% mana, it's a really nice early game item, allowing for more aggressive plays, uh, saving uh, yourself or your hunter that you're in lane with in problematic situations. There have even been solo lane pickups in order to, well, facilitate the laning phase for those with a weak early and uh, huge mana problems. So, you might see it a little more in like a swift wing combo, but mostly it will be picked up as a secondary relic by solo laners and as a first relic by supports, simply because they have the most health and all that. 
The upgrade to it is somewhat interesting because it gives HP 5 and MP 5. And I don't really see that being all too beneficial. When you think about it, it's actually just 90 extra healing. That really doesn't make sense to be upgraded for that early because it's way too expensive for that. And late game 90 HP is also not too much. So what you're getting it for again is the mana. And I am not so sure if that alone justifies it, especially when it's still 120 seconds cooldown, so you can't just spam this effect on cooldown or anything. As such, a very strong base version, kind of a lackluster upgrade. Phantom Veil remains a specific counter to walls, but also makes you immune to knock up, and also gives you 40% crowd control reduction now, so against very CC heavy comms it also makes a lot more sense in general now. The downside here is the 180 seconds cooldown and the 5 seconds duration, which is not all that long. The upgrade version increases the duration to 10 seconds, but it's still a fair bit of gold that you have to spend. So very, very much a situational counter. You will see this picked up, but only against very specific comps, and you should use it as such. Against an Odin, it can be good. Against a Thor, Ymir, maybe a Tyr, anything that really relies on those abilities, then it makes sense, but not so much for just a little bit of CC. Purification Beats makes you immune to crowd control for 2 seconds and cleanses all the crowd control effects from you. 160 seconds cooldown at base. If you upgrade it, then it's 130 seconds. This item will always be good as long as CC exists in the game. And Smite has a lot of CC, so really not much to say about it. Stays in exactly the same place as it is. No real changes there. Uh, upgrade, once again, depending on how many CC heavy ultimates, for example, there are on the enemy team. If it's worth the upgrade, mostly something for late game. Shield of Thorns is one of the more interesting change relics out there. While it hasn't seen much play in the relegations and it's probably gonna remain a niche item, I would not sleep on this item. In its base state, it's 50% reflection for the next 5 seconds on a 120 second cooldown and the reflection is magical. What is really relevant here in my opinion is the upgraded version. You get 8 seconds of reflection on a 100 second cooldown. That means it is pretty much up for the other team fight. And you can basically, if you're a bruiser or a tankier character, not be attacked for 8 seconds. So overall I think this item is really, really strong because you can really bully enemies and they can't really fight back. And if you're a little ahead, that's gonna be very devastating for them. The problem is, who do you put it on? You can't really put it on a support, supports the other relics, and many solo laners will often not have a slot for it. So really it's situational on solo laners or maybe very tankly junglers. And Really, there's not much room for it, but when there's room, I think this item may be much better than people give it credit for at the moment, simply because you are basically not attackable by any squishy that would just kill himself on you. Regardless, because of the very limited guard pool of characters that can make use of it, it remains a niche item. Sundering Spear has actually been picked up a few times. It's still a niche item, but it's an interesting choice at least. With the true damage that it initially deals and the increased damage by 15% in its original state on 120 seconds cooldown for 5 seconds or even 30% for 5 seconds on a 90 second cooldown in the upgraded version of the Sundering Spear, you can really focus someone out and completely obliterate them with your team if you have the coordination required for it. Once again, the main problem is who do you put it on? Many characters will often need, need their beats, they need their aegis, and then there's no room for that anymore. And really the only one who can consider it most of the time will be the solo laner. But when the solo laner has an option to get it, it's a very strong item. It's also very strong in the solo lane itself for the direct trades. Last but not least, there is a teleport glyph. Nothing really changed here except for slight tweaks on the cooldown. You can teleport to uh, allied towers or wards. It's now 200 seconds cooldown when not upgraded and 160 seconds when upgraded. Usually you should not be needing that upgrade, usually the original state should be fine for most of the game unless you're looking to counter some split push or late game. Typically the standard solo item that you get first and that will remain that way for most unless you're going for some swift wing combo and as such is still very strong. So to sum this all up, quite a bit of information there. Most of the relics from Season 3 do generally maintain their value. Shell loses a bit of it, but many of the others still have their solo place. Sprint maybe a little less so. But overall, uh, very minor shifts in the core relics that you will get. However, many more situational relics that have new functions that you will see more often that you can make good use of. And that is something that you should always consider and be yeah, able to implement in your builds when necessary. 
with that thank you guys for watching i will start a new series on basically your builds soon so if you are interested in sending in a build uh, follow me on twitter i will post the question there when it's time for that and uh, then you can answer there so i will do that on that platform and uh, if you want to participate then please follow me there other than that if you're not subscribed feel free to subscribe feel free to like the video duke sloth out <laughs>